this was a big journey, and it was a, it was um, probably one of the greatest highlights I feel of what I've achieved in, in being able to reconstruct that with the amazing crew and and um, personnel that I had working with me, um, and of course with Martin's writing, because he he is the poet, he was the writer. I was sitting beside him and talking about ideas sometimes, but he was the actual the one that was able to. Um, well, I, I don't know. We worked together very, very well. We shopped the script around with a number of producers, and a lot of them were saying, well, why can't you do it up here in the Bombay Hills and we can pretend it's central Otago and crazy things like that. It was only Don Reynolds who said, yeah, yeah, I can see it, I can see it. I can see the, the lovely, um, the way the patina on the shovels will be, you know, and how we'll get that right. And, some people said, oh no, you can make it all in polystyrene and pretend that they're all rocks and whatever. No, we wanted to do the real thing. And with Janelle Aston as the production designer, we were able to go into those valleys, find the valleys with, which had exact Chinese dwellings there. We weren't quite sure until when we excavated in what looked like a potential garden, we found shards of Chinese pottery there. So we knew that this was, this was it. So, we, we built and constructed, um, or no, we um, revealed what was already there. We built a few little things just, um, and then from that, having found the locations, this was the beauty that we had up to a year before the production. There wasn't this mad scramble where when the green light goes, they've just got to go and you've got four weeks pre-production. Desperate Remedies was shot in Shed 11 down on the wharf. It's a very long, Wharf shed was that no longer exists, and everything was filmed within that shed. Uh, there was a, a stage when there was another shed. That's right. The shed was next door, shed twelve, I assume, where the production designers were working, and it was chaotic because as soon as we, as soon as somebody said cut, or the director said cut then all hell would break loose next door with hammers and circular saws going, which meant, and you're dealing with these, they're very close together, and trying to concentrate on what you were doing with the art department going flat up, because we had so many sets to construct and build. And um, Michael Kane was the um, production designer, and um, all this was going on, and then they were always way behind and under budgeted, and, um, Guys were running around, you'd set up a frame, oh this looks good and we can put the light up there and we'll get down there and that surface is rather nice and you'd come back, you'd, uh, oh yeah we'll talk about that one, we'll be shooting that in an hour's time, you'd come back to this one and the whole thing had changed because they had, oh you're doing that, right we better do this and they've changed it all and, um, and a guy was there painting the surface, it was no longer black, it was white and, and but hold on, um, so that was really interesting. Sometimes the actresses, like I remember Jennifer Ward Leyland coming in, there was always this problem with wet paint. I mean, it was getting on her frocks, things like that, or, or her hands just touching the door and it was all, it was all wet. So it was very immediate. We were, we were running all the time. It was extremely um, exhilarating and exciting because of that. Uh, and totally up to invention. The w scene with the whales was always going to be at night. We investigated the idea of doing them all in a studio up in Auckland and, and having a wet studio. And then in the end we came round to the, um, it was going to be a daytime thing. Then the weather became totally uh, problematic and you're going to do it in sun. We found in doing close-ups with what Grant Major had made with and co with the um, the whale makers, uh, which was a synthetic plastic uh, vinyl. It looked like vinyl. It didn't look like skin. So Grant and, and co were mixing. I think it was like a it was like a um, barbecue sauce with sand, and mixing this on the surface. So it sort of had a slimy feel. So that. The plasticky vinyl thing didn't look like shiny vinyl. But actually, when you look at documentaries, this is a weird thing. When you look at documentaries of whales, they look like shiny vinyl. But people don't know that. And so they, you've got to sort of steer their vision away from that and give it a gritty texture. So 
all these things, we found out that they actually looked better in soft, overcast light. It looked more believable. It was all about making it look believable. And this film, Whale Rider, was very, we had very much an approach that it was going to have a, a real feel. It, we didn't want a studio feel. There was no, very little um, uh, backroom studio sort of feel to it. There's a 40 watt light bulb up there, there's a 40 watt light bulb effect on your face. And there's no back room and, and nice little nuances to make it look like a Coca-Cola ad. It was gritty. We wanted that gritty realism. Now I shot that with Vincent when um, he had just been turned down from the Film Commission to do River Queen. And he was pretty mad. Anyway, he wanted to do this other thing and he thought, well he did this film 27 years ago called um, and Spring on Plants Alone, which I was able to shoot the last nine days of, way back there and whenever that was, in 78, 79. And uh, he wanted to make an educational film which would show his film in, in total and then have all these interviews afterwards. So we went off on this, um, I, I went many times with him back into the Uruwaras and stayed on Mirai and we filmed people and families at that stage, we weren't quite sure where it was going. It was a purely organic thing. He was researching many, many interviews on DigiBeta tape. In the end, we were finding, with my two redhead lights and one soft broad, the way that he wanted. He wanted the frames to be full of family, to get them all in shot. So we tried, and in the end, on Mirai, they have these forms, seating forms. So by putting it in a certain way and blacking out that window there and adding more light and a little bit of eye light, we were able to get about six people all stacked up. And so I'd be way over there on the longest end to try and get that stacked up look. So we, we found this look through, um, I suppose it was about 18 months of going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards to do all these interviews. In the end, he started to realize there is a feature film here and he was unearthing and unearthing more and more material about Tapui um, and, um, and Nikki. And uh, it, it developed into this very, very personal story and I, I love it. I think it's, it's one of his best films. And um, yeah, unfortunately I, I wasn't able to f film at all. I, I, was only, I did a small portion of it. It was um, amazing to be in such large spaces and they were freezing cold. And uh, over in the corner was this funny little tent thing with this whirring sound and it was a heater inside this little tent and there was Peter O'Toole in there. And that was his heat heated room where he would be going over his, his uh, dialogue. Um, and then we'd call for Mr O'Toole and we'd, we'd begin. Um, and. Uh, yeah, trying to get a, a, a feeling of um, naturalism, usually single, single soft source coming in, not, not overly lighting it, quite contrasty. It was my first film using digital. It was with an Arri D20. And um, mm, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the quality of, well, the quality of restricting myself to usually the 40 mil and the, and the 27 mil. Um, uh, and also always moving in close to the actors, very close, at times alarmingly close. And um, I don't think Sam liked me coming so close as I came on that film. He tried to express to Tor that uh, a comedy should be wide shots, not close-ups. But my camera was about here, this far away from him at times. And I think it works in the end. I think um, the audience really gets a, f a sense of his... Um, his uh, his magic, and I think his performance is the best he's ever done.